Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we're going to talk about Microsoft Forms convert Word or PDF quizzes into Microsoft Forms. Now this was announced around the June of 2022, so that was last month, with a very specific disclaimer that this is only allowed or currently available for the education tenants. Those are the ones which are Microsoft 365 A1 or A3 or A5. And that's because school teachers, professors, they already have a whole bunch of tests or quiz in a Word or a PDF document, and they should not be spending all this extra time to rebuild it from scratch in Microsoft Forms. This upload convert functionality should do it automatically for you. And I'm gonna demonstrate that to you. Also, I'll show you a very specific ways to do that because if you do this correctly, it even automatically creates the sections for you. So stick around, this is really important. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. And as a quick review of the announcement that I just made, here it is. It was posted on the Microsoft Tech Community for specifically Microsoft Forms. And over here, the announcement was made on June 15th, 2022. So it was last month. And as you scroll down over here under the FAQs for additional FAQs, the first question which is asked is, when will this become available? The answer is the new experience is rolling out to education customers. And what education customers really means is that when you actually go and take a look at the licenses, over there you will see for the education one, you have the Office 365 A1, A3, A5. These are the specific ones that they have. So let's actually switch gears and let me show you this, all right? This is a education customer, an A-type tenant over here. So when I come to the A-type tenant and I'm in my Microsoft Forms, by default in the Microsoft Forms, like we click on the app launcher and you go to Microsoft Forms, this is basically what you see. This is the initial landing page of Microsoft Forms, but you don't see that functionality over here. Even if I click on this drop down, I don't you know, I see new forms, I don't see it over here. What you have to do is go to all my forms and in all my forms, you now see this import functionality. So let me just pause over here and actually go to my own tenant because my own tenant is not an education one, it's actually a business kind. So when I come to my own tenant, and in my own tenant, I come over here uh, or to the Office you know, 365, I go to Microsoft Forms. In my Microsoft Forms, again, over here, I cannot tell the difference. But if I go to all my forms, me as a regular user, I do not see that upload functionality. So this is just to prove a point that this is only available for the education tenants right now. So I'll just go and click this out right now. And now let's go and test this. So I've actually come up with two scenarios because as the document stated in the Microsoft TechNet, currently you have two formats that can do this. It's a Microsoft Word and a Microsoft PDF. So I've got both of them and they're almost exactly the same. But for the first one, I'm actually gonna go and do an import and I'll do my Microsoft quiz. I mean, sorry, my Microsoft PDF. So here I am on the import and it says import your quiz, which means it's kind of telling you is that these are for those scenarios where you can go ahead and have an existing quiz that you're handing out to your students and they go ahead and do all these quiz or tests. You've already got all this on the Word format or the PDF format and now you want to automate it by taking it to the Microsoft Forms. No more, you have to go and manually rebuild all of this, just import it and it will work and I'll share those tip tips and tricks with you. So something to keep in mind is that the file size is 100 meg and then click on the see important guidance and over here it gives you a tip is that this is how the format should be. Go ahead and don't make it too jazzy. Your form should at least be legible and you know it should not have too much design factors to it. Make your form a little bit do right because it's in the infancy stage. So that's why kind of work with us over here. So I'm going to click on got it and now I'm going to click on the upload from this device. And over here, I'll actually go and get my practice test. It is a PDF file. So I'll click on it, I'll click on open, and then right now it will tell me one minute left to refresh or finish the, you know, the con conversion. So it's actually going through that. But if you noticed, it finished a lot more faster. Now, as I was testing and learning through this, I did notice that it stayed inside the one minute mark, which is awesome, but there was a little bit of a difference every once in a while. Like you saw how that you know, graph was actually growing, telling you at what you know, is the progress bar which is going. Um, sometimes it went through really fast, sometimes it went through a little slow, but it still stayed inside that one minute mark. So all in all, the conversion process is really great. So now if you noticed also that while it was being built, it, my, my forms was all empty over here in the tenant, but this one showed up. So I'm actually pretty good. I don't need to import anything else. So I'll click on start preview. Now, what I wanna do is that while we're actually seeing here, let me also go ahead and open up that PDF file that we have, all right? 
So this is that PDF file that we are reviewing. This is what it looks like. Now, quick overview of this PDF file is again, as that demo little section, which I showed you about, you know, what the form should be. This is very similar to it. This form was actually built by me to prove this demo as I did it in Microsoft Word and I kept it very simple, but I used all that Microsoft functionalities. I was able to go ahead and use the ones and the twos. I was able to auto append all the numbers. I did it to use the Microsoft Word, but it still worked out really well. And in this case, if you can see, I've also got the title over here, right? So it's actually working out really well. Now keep this in mind that when I was doing it for this building over here, I, I intentionally tried to keep them on each and every page, but keep that in the back of your mind because I'll actually just come and explain more about how that does make a difference. So all in all, this was the form. This PDF file was the one that I uploaded. So now when I actually go back to my Microsoft forms, you see that it has uploaded and a couple of interesting things have happened. It went there and actually grabbed everything. It says the practice test, this is for the English grammar. It automatically went and put all the sections in. I've got all the same functionality to actually go ahead and change the order of the questions. Um, the ones which I put in as the one, two, three, and then the ABC, it automatically came in as the radio function fun functionality. See the ones over here, it automatically went and did it. Now, once it's imported over here, there's the ad additional things that I have to do. Well, the questions came in, the answers came in, I need to go ahead and say, hey, which one of this is actually the correct one? And so for that, I actually do need to come in and I gotta go ahead and say, okay, which one is the correct one, which is not the correct one, you know, go ahead and add the answers to it. This is something that additionally I have to do because hey, it is smart enough to actually go ahead and transition the form. It's not smart enough to know what you're thinking. You need to go and say which one of this is the correct answer and so on and so forth. But it took did so much of the heavy lifting work for you by actually importing in the process, all right? But here, it went there and put it at section wise, all of these other questions that I had from the questions that I did. Next, you are able to go ahead and manipulate this further as well, because it's not that it's hard coded and then it's blocked because you didn't import it, it doesn't block it. So I can actually come to the theming section. I can go ahead and add some more theming functionality based on which are coloring you want. You might have your own themes. You can go ahead and customize this to however you feel fit. You can go ahead and, you know, add branching functionality, do it to sections, all of that you can still put in images, designing pieces completely up to you. All right, so I showed you the basic import process. Now I wanna share some tips and tricks with you to show how you can actually make this really perfect and make it smart enough to improve. And for that, I'm gonna do some demos. So what we did was I have first then showed you that nice PDF file, but now I'm gonna show you two Word documents. So the first one I'm gonna intentionally open up is right over here. You see that this one has its title, but it doesn't have any of these other headings. Remember the headings one, the PDF file that I showed you, it had different headings, but this one just has the title. Now granted that I did go ahead and break this down into pages. Like I just made sure that these type of questions all fell under this one page. Then I was able to put a you know, break and I went and added some of these math functions. Then I went and put another break. Is Microsoft's Forms import process smart enough to understand this breakdown? Well, let's go and test it, all right? So I'm gonna now go and close this one. We'll go back into our Microsoft Forms. We're gonna actually close this one and I'll come back into my My Forms section. I'll click on Import, click on the Upload section, and I'm gonna go and click on the correct one which we just did, which was the Test No Headings. I'm gonna click on that and I'll click on Open. Now it's going through the upload process. Actually, if you notice that the icon changed over here, the first one actually had the PDF one, this time we use Word, so it's saying Word to Forms. So keep that in mind that you only have these two options right now, PDF and Word. And it is completed. So I'm gonna now click on Start Review. And in Start Review, this is all that we see. And if you notice, I didn't get my sections on the top. And just for you to quickly recap, I'm opening up that Word document again, because this is what it is. It has the title on the top. It doesn't have any of the headings, it's just, keeps going and going. Granted, I have the page breaks, did not have any of the headings. And because the headings were not there, this thing became exactly one full form. See, no sections came in. Very important point for you to understand. So the takeaway from this one is that the heading one automatically translate as a sections over here. It is not the page breaks that does it. Now, some of you may be a little bit skeptical on that to like, Daniel, are you sure it was the header or are you sure it was the page breaks? Because it could be a little confusing. I saw the same thing. It could really be one of the two. And that's great thinking. I'm glad that you're thinking that way because I want to do another demo. I'm going to close this one now. And now I'm going to go for the third demo. And that third demo is going to be headings and subheadings. I'm going to click this one up now. 
this word document and I'm going to call that as my headings and subheadings. So watch this. I've got my heading over here. Well, this is basically the title. I've got this one as heading one. I've got this one as heading two. So I'm going to go and scroll down a little bit and you'll see that this one has that pop, you know, that page breakdown. So I'm going to do that testing first, right? We'll get to the other testing as well. I'm going to go ahead and now upload this one, upload it, and I'll go ahead and do the headings and the subheading. We'll open this one again. Again, it realized, it automatically recognized this is a Word document. So it's going through the import. It says one minute left to finish, but it usually easily finishes it inside that. The third one came up over here. I don't know if you noticed it, but I'm going to click on start review. And now it immediately see the sections over here. The sections showed up, which is great, which means it did able to smart enough figure out something from that Word document that we pulled. But the sections had the English section over here. And by the way, let me just open this one up on that so we can actually do a little bit of side-by-side -side comparison. I'm gonna open this one up over here like that. I'm gonna open up this one over here so we can actually see this side-by-side -side comparison. All right, so this thing said English over here. That was the heading one came up over here. That's fine, but the section went and built up after that. Well, this section ended at question number three, right? It ended over here at question number three, which means that it did go ahead and recognize that subheading over here. So key takeaway for you is that if you go ahead and put in either heading one or heading two, it, when the translation happens, the import happens, it automatically breaks that down into a section thing. Very important for you to notice because if this is basically how you want it to be imported in, then you're great. You can automatically transition it into sections just by adding the heading one or the heading two over here. That breakdown from the word automatically transfers over here. Now, we went ahead and did it all the way down from the questions right there see from this numbering over here to this numbering there was a page breakdown however that breakdown didn't happen over here why because there was no sections there was no heading area on that side there was no heading over here so it did not translate over correctly over here so so it's very important that you go ahead and plan how your document's going to be or if it is a PDF document and then you're uploading it well then it is what it is but if you have the option that hey you have the original word I just want to tweak it in the Word document instead of putting all the work into the forms. Well, you have these options and I've actually just shared some tips and tricks with you. So as a quick recap, we just learned that this functionality to upload a form that automatically does the conversion is only available for the education tenant. And we really don't know when this will be available for all the other businesses or enterprise tenants yet. So keep a close eye on the tech community for that. Next, it only works for PDF and Word documents. It doesn't work for anything else right now. That's the only current situation. And then last, it's important that your PDF or Word documents are designed well because it should not have too many fancy designs to it. It will not import in correctly. And if your documents actually have titles and headings, then those do translate over as sections into your Microsoft form. And that does make it a little bit more easier. So hopefully this was, video was helpful to you. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms. Hey everyone, hopefully you found this video useful. And if you did, can you help me help you? Can you subscribe to this YouTube channel? Because remember, I provide fresh content on a weekly basis and it's 100% free. So if you have subscribed, thank you so much and pass the word. But if you haven't, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.